Amos chapter 3 talks about how can two walk together unless they be agreed. We have to agree with God and the wisdom which is from God. Is What people don't understand is that that which is uh, from God and that which is of God is simply that of God and that which is of the spirit of the world is of the spirit of the world. The two do not commingle. <laughs> okay. So we have to walk together with God. We have to agree with him. His word is forever settled in heaven. We have to settle it and receive it so that it may be established in the earth. This pleases God. The Bible says that Jesus is at the right hand of God, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. The enemies are the enemies of righteousness. It is the forces of of darkness. It is the lies against the truth. Okay. So when we receive the things of God, as it says in Revelation, we overcome. Uh, Revelation, again, chapter 2, it says, To him that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So this word is to all the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. We overcome. The Bible says that whatsoever is born of God, or whoever is born of God, overcomes the world. And so we are born of God. Our job is to overcome the world by walking in righteousness, walking in what is right, doing what God said from the beginning, have dominion over the world. Everything that creeps, everything that, that crawls, okay? You are supposed to have dominion over the earth, over the world, all right? So the world system and its influences should not be over you. You should not receive. And like I said, those things of the world, they the way that they work is they seduce they are subtle. The spirit of the world is subtle. It seduces. It tells you things that are not of God. In other words, the, when you leave your first love, you have to receive from the Lord. In other words, everything in your life now, the Bible says, when you're born again, is of God. And so when you read the word, you receive from God. And you receive revelation by the, by the Holy Spirit. So what does the spirit of the world? It says something that sounds like it's from God. And it even says scriptures. But it does not align with the spirit of God. So even a scripture which is used to seduce and manipulate. And is not aligned with... With the, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit who is from God. So what is the Holy Spirit going to do? He's going to teach us all things. He's going to manifest Jesus. He's, he's not going to speak of his own. But that which he hears, that will he speak. That which is of the Father. The Bible says no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So how can you know anything about God without the Spirit of God? No one knows the things of God, except the Spirit of God. No one knows the wisdom of God. No one knows the heart of God. No one knows the purposes of God. So a person can say something that sounds right. The Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. God's ways are right. They come from God. They come from above. And they are manifest in the earth by the Holy Spirit. And by that revelation, the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, the, the, the gates of hell shall not prevail. There is a struggle or there, there is opposition. Okay, The Bible says concerning the world, that which is of the world. People which are, are of the world, they hear the world. They receive the world. They love the world. So all that which is of the world, if there is no opposition, no resistance, the, the, the truth of God 
will receive resistance from the spirit of the world. And, and I emphasize that this is all by the Holy Spirit. Because when you differentiate between the spirit of the world, you have on the other side the spirit of God, the, the Holy Spirit. And so as the Bible says, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. We said far country represents the heaven, that which is from above. The, the Bible says in Hebrews that Abraham counted himself as a sojourner. In other words, a traveler. He traveled in tent with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They acknowledged that their home was not this world, but they sought a better country, a, be a city whose building foundation was not made by man's hand, but by God. And so it says they sought a heavenly. The, the mindset of a child of God, a person whose God is the Lord, is that we know this earth is not our home. What are we supposed to do upon the earth? We're supposed to, to, um, to have dominion. We're supposed to have authority. We're supposed to... Uh, Go through and complete the calling of God. The Bible, even if we live to be 120, the Bible says our life is but a vapor. What are we supposed to be doing in that time? We're supposed to receive the, the will of God and walk it out, the purposes of God in our life. And we know that those purposes are not to be aligned with the world, but to be aligned with God. And so when you do that you will overcome the world. What does the spirit of the world try to bring forth? The spirit of the world brings forth blindness, darkness, and also by the spirit of the world, the curse came. Remember, the Adam and Eve chose the wisdom that was from the devil. So the curse came, all right? But uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. Okay. So the curse came when Adam received the wisdom that came from this earth, from this world that was demonic, that was based on the flesh, that was based on the senses. All right. And so that, but we are called to overcome the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Okay, So, amen, we are called to overcome the world. That means whatever the world says, we're supposed to overcome it. We're called to overcome it. Whether it be uh, sickness or disease, well, the, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the fact that Jesus has died, shed his blood, and brought us into covenant and communion, the, the, the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of our testimony. Testimony means that we have uh, uh, evidence, we have something to say. A testimony is established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. A testimony should be from God. So we overcome the devil by the, the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. When our testimony lines up with the, that which is settled in heaven, the good report. That's why the Bible says, who hath believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And then it, it says the gospel that Jesus was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement, the punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. That's the good report. Who has believed our report? The good report says that we are healed. We know that the, 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 the spies, when Moses sent out the spies, that they brought forth a, a, a evil report. They did not believe the word of the Lord that this land I have given it unto you. And so the, the land which God has given, God says, how do you overcome? How do you receive the land? How do you overcome those giants and those people that are there? 
by believing the word of the Lord. So even today, how do we overcome our giants? How do we overcome sickness and disease? How do we overcome lack and poverty? How do we uh, overcome mental torment and anguish? Okay, it is by the good report. The Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. Okay, so we believe the report. Power is released. We receive salvation, not just to be born again, but salvation is wholeness, soundness, and peace. So now we see the word of God beginning to make sense. But when we cherry pick, when we pick a doctrine from here and from over here, the Bible says that it is um, as, 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 as sound and brass, tinkling cymbals. The Bible says that it is um, winds of doctrine, shifting, changing. Okay, those doctrines can change. Why would those doctrines change? Think about the wisdom of God. The Bible says that that which can be seen is temporal or temporary. That which is associated with the earth in the earth realm will change, shift, and morph to fit the circumstances. But God's word never changes, never fails. It's forever settled. God does not alter his word. He does not alter his covenant. Okay, so God remains faithful. So we have to look at the faithfulness of God. We cannot look at uh, Aunt so and so or Uncle so and so. They said that they believed God, and and this happened, which was contrary to the good report. We look at the faithfulness which is of God. Okay, God never changes, and so we receive the good report. And so we have to be found believing. Jesus said, when I come back to the earth, will I find faith? Will I find you believing? Wouldn't it be better to believe, even if you don't understand everything? I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Okay? What's the worst that could happen? That even if you didn't receive your inheritance, because whatever reason, you don't know that we are will still be found with the Lord. We are always found with the Lord. So, the devil came with another wisdom. That wisdom is called the wisdom of this world. That wisdom tries to cut you off from that which is above. The wisdom which is from God. Okay? And so, the Bible says that as cold water is to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. So the wisdom which is from God is good news, number one. And then you have to be thirsty for it. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, that which is right, that which God intended for they shall be filled. Receiving the fullness. Being filled, being filled up. Re receiving satisfaction. Receiving refreshment. As good news is from a far country. You think about somebody that's in a place and you think of them waiting for some good news. Think about somebody in a city that's besieged, okay, surrounded about by enemies. And so a courier comes with good news. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Good news from a far country. So now... I got hope. I can, I can stand up. I can hold my head up high because good news has come that says that there is a better. Jesus says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty those that are bruised, to set the captive free, to heal the brokenhearted. Good news, Jesus has come with good news, okay, from a heaven, from a far country. Now, we not only hunger and thirst to be, to, to yearn to be born again, that now once we are born again, we continue to hunger and thirst for righteousness, for the, that which is right, the good news. 
So we have to be thirsty for it. The Bible says that as as thirsty as as cold water to a thirsty soul. It has to be the good news, the gospel, the will of God, the righteousness of God. It has to be to you as, as that which can only satisfy. I guess that's the best way to say it, amen? That which is of God is the only thing that can satisfy. That which is of this world, the wisdom which is of this world, cannot satisfy me. It cannot refresh me. It cannot revive me. I want the word of God. And I want the truth of the word of God, which is good news. That is what refreshes me. That is what revives me. And that is what satisfies me. I am not satisfied with the world. Okay. If you are satisfied with the world, it means that you have an appetite for the world. If you are satisfied with the world, the world system, when we say world, we're talking about the world system. It means that you have an appetite. It means that you are rehearsed in the things of the world. Remember, when Jesus came, he preached, the kingdom is coming to you. This was new. They, they were astonished at his doctrine. And so it is today. When we preach the kingdom, people are astonished at our doctrine. It is different from what the world dispenses. It is different from the wisdom which is of the world. So, John the Baptist came. He preached that the kingdom is come. Jesus preached that the kingdom is come. And now we preach that the kingdom is come. What is the kingdom? It is the place of God's reigning and ruling and having dominion. God's will is for the kingdom to come to earth as it is in heaven. God does not want to be locked out. He, he gave man a will. He gave him a choice. He set before man good and evil, life and death. And so Adam chose the, the wisdom that was from the world. Adam chose the, the wisdom, the words that came from Satan. He hearkened unto, with his choice, he chose, and by that, the, the devil thought that, okay, I got mankind. Now man is locked away You're from the wisdom which is from God. You know, there's terms in the Bible, uh, in, in the uh, Old Testament especially, about heaven being locked up and heaven being brass and that there's no open word and there's no open heaven because it is the word of God which opens up the will of God upon the earth. I repeat, it is the word of God which opens up the will of God. And man, by his will, can either choose the wisdom which is from God or the wisdom which is from the world. When you choose the wisdom which is from the world, it locks you out from the wisdom which is from God. Because your eye is not single. Your, your eye is then what the Bible called evil. Your body is full of darkness. So you, your body, you are walking, you're residing in the world. And that leads to death, destruction. But that which from above is of God. And it is, it is heavenly. The wisdom which is from God is, is gentle, easy to be entreated. It is pure. It is, it is peaceable. It is full of good fruit, fruits, fruits of righteousness. The wisdom which is from God is full of good fruit, fruits of righteousness, okay? So, we, when we are in the world and we are under darkness, we have a false perception of God. Because we are under that veil of darkness, we don't see God the way that he truly is. That God is, God is good. So, the devil wants you cut off from God. Cut off from his goodness. Cut off from his wisdom. And so we receive the gospel and we walk in the good report. And we walk in the spirit and the word of God to continue to walk in God's ways. Jesus said to those that were, um, he said that if you're thirsty, come unto me. He said that 
um, out of your belly would flow rivers of living water. If any man thirst. And so that is, he spoke of the Spirit. That is by the Holy Spirit. And so we have to be thirsty and we have to hunger for that which is right. And, and we have to put off or to cast off, the Bible says, uh, concerning the wisdom of this, of this world. It says that we're supposed to uh, cast off um, every reason, every high thing which exalts itself against the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, that we are supposed to cast down every thought, every reasoning, every high thing which exalts itself. In other words, the, 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 what the world tries to do, what the Satan tries to do, when you begin to receive the wisdom which is from the world, that is actually idolatry. The Bible says that you're in rebellion, okay, and you're in stubbornness. The Bible says just as uh, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And the Bible says that stubbornness is idolatry. <laughs> okay. So that, that stubbornness, you, you recall that Jesus always spoke to the scribes and Pharisees that they were stiff-necked, that they were stubborn. They rejected the wisdom of God. They rejected the wisdom of God. When God sent prophets and God sent apostles and God sent Jesus they rejected the wisdom of God. That's called rebellion and stubbornness. And so that, that is idolatry. So the Old Testament shadow of idolatry is, is brought to light when we reject the wisdom which is from God and receive the wisdom which is from the world. Job said that he required God's words more than his necessary food that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of God that which is from above that which is of God that is going to be totally different if you think it's like the world then you're mistaken the wisdom which is from God is going to be totally opposite of the wisdom from this world it's, it's going to astound, uh, people will be astonished by the doctrine which is from God, okay? So, Adam and Eve had to dismiss God's word to receive Satan's word. In order to receive the, the words that Satan was speaking, they had to act like that, they, they had to dismiss the assignment and the commandments that were from God. And so um, we will see um, that God has always tried to get his wisdom. And I'll frame it this way in, in my last uh, minutes to speak. Okay, so Adam and Eve sinned. And, and so the curse came on the earth and the, the wisdom which is from the world. So darkness and a veil came upon the earth. So, but God loves mankind and he wants to continue relationship with God. So God says, I, I can continue relationship with you by covenant. So God began to make covenant with man so that man will give him a place so that he can reign and rule. All right. And so then Man, still under this veil of, of darkness, all right, because the world was under a curse, would follow God for a little while, and then they would fall away. They would follow God for a little while, and then they would fall away. So God, the wisdom of God, would send prophets. The wisdom of God will send spokespeople with a word from the Lord, with good news from a far country. And depending on what world system the people were in, they would either receive the prophets or they would persecute the prophets. They would stone the prophets. They would kill the prophets in such as it is today. So God sends his spokespeople. The Bible says when Christ ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto man. He gave apostles. I am an apostle. He gave prophets and teachers. 
He gave evangelists. He gave pastors. So that's five. It's not just pastors. The Bible says Jesus gave five for the edification of the body of Christ. To, to, for the work, to build them up for the work of the ministry. For, for the church to come to the full measure and the stature of Jesus. So the wisdom of God penetrates the veil of darkness. Okay. By sending his spokespeople with a word from above, with a word, good news from the heavenly. So what did people say? If, if you study your word, the, the Bible says when people would reject God, even the kings of the earth would say, why are y'all prophets come to trouble us? So in, instead of receiving the word of God, they said these are, are troubling words and they would persecute the prophets. Jesus says that the world will hate you. He says, marvel not that the world will hate you because they hated me and that they will persecute you. And he says to rejoice when they persecute you because that you are deemed worthy. Why are you deemed worthy? Because you were operating in the kingdom of God. And that was a polar opposite of where the people that were doing the persecuting were operating. And so if the world all loves you, the world loves its own, you, you need to be concerned. But if the world is against, the world system is against the word which you speak and the life that you live and the lifestyle that people continue to look for cheats in your armor to tear down your testimony. We, we who are born of God uh, had a life or a history, and even now the Bible says that when we, when we fall, we shall arise, that we are not perfect, but we have Jesus who is perfect. And as we crucify the flesh, Jesus comes forth. But someone will always, you can tell when a person is, is of the world. They try to tear down the testimony of those that are righteous, the righteousness of God. And they will persecute the spokespeople, the prophets of God, those with a word from the Lord. So um, that's where we want to pick up next time how that the, the, the people of the world that are in line with the spirit of the world will come against the spirit who is from God and will come against the spokespeople that speak by the spirit of God. So we want to unmask the spirit which is of the world. So I hope that this message has been a blessing unto you. And until next time, may God's richest and greatest blessings be yours. Thank you very much.